Hey, it's Joe Glines, and uh, I want to demonstrate here. First, notice this uh, yellow bar is going across the screen. Um, I'll explain what it is here in a minute. This is my what I've worked on this week, and uh, I realized um, because I'm doing these API calls and I'm paying money for it, I don't want to rerun this. Um, and, and it's just I, I like this functionality of seeing where I am in my process. I think I have it built in also if I mouse over it. No, I don't have it in this one. Um, I have a normal default loop that'll update where I am and give me the count out of where I am and the percents. But here, I don't even have to click on the script, right? I can just watch it cruising through it and know where I am. So I could, I don't have to have the script open, right? I can still watch it and go, oh, here, here's where I am. And here's, here's something else I bought. Let's get rid of that. Um, but um, it's a cool function. So one of the things I automated this week, someone asked me if I had a way to verify email addresses. And um, I use I use several different ones, um, but the last ones I've been using lately is this verif verify, um, sorry, API proofy.io. It's actually, if you look at it, it's like verify, um, there's some other, for some reason in my head, it's still verify. Maybe it's the, the actual API um, documentation stuff. But anyway, it can go through and Let's see if it's, I think I have a message box up here. Oh, here we go. And it popped up on the other screen, but it's done. Um, I'm going to take that file. And because there's e people's email addresses in it, I didn't want to show that. However, if I pop it open in Excel, let me um, launch Excel. And then I'll open the file. And you know what, let me, well, it, it's okay, I'll, I'll minimize it right away. Yep. Finish, hopefully that pulls it in right. Here we go. Yeah, what I was just thinking is I'll truncate that down so you can't see it. Um, but what it did was it um, it brought back and said the status, well, these two are, are a perfect correlation, right? If we were to add um, filters and sort, You'll see every time this is a one, it's deliverable. Two is risky, which basically means they couldn't actually tell. And three is undeliverable. Um, it also comes back, I should have froze the uh, top row here. Um, it held you if it's your free email address, if the syntax is valid, and if the mail server itself was down. And so so these, these two guys, the mail server at whatever domain this is, um, it, actually those are bad, so it should be fine. Um, so e co e marketing e, e co e marketing dot com. I wonder if those are both from the same one or two different ones. No, but um, for whatever reason, that mail server was down at the time. They weren't free email addresses, but all of them it looks like the syntax was correct. If I had a comma in there or something, a little character, this um, and this of course you could do an auto hotkey without even sending it to them. So if you're smart and want to save money, you build the syntax check in there first. Even this mail server one, um, I had a script someone. Someone, I forget who it was, helped me with uh, pinging the mail servers. And you can check if the mail server is valid. And then, because if, if you can't ping an active mail server, then the email address isn't going to be valid, right? There's, there's just no way anything can happen. Um, in the free ones, I have a list of a lot of free ones. So Gmail, generally speaking, if I looked at the domains here, um, we would see... Gmail is um, more often than not the the free one, right? There's I actually noticed one AOL, which is crazy, but um, anyway, so that was the um, my verify AP. Let's let's do a little walk through the code here. Um, so I have my key and my my ID in in any file, so that way I can share this and look at it, and we don't have to look at my actual credentials, right? Which is just a handy way to have it outside the file. That way, if I ever show this file, it uh, it doesn't have to. Um, I don't have to worry about that. And then I read in the file where all the emails are. Um, I parse out the uh, the file name so I can just append basically, where's my header? I have a check here. So if the file doesn't exist yet, it's gonna create a file with the same file name, but put underscore verified dot txt. And that way I know it's the same thing, um, except for it has that. Um, and I write the header rows. So the first one I know in this file, it was just email address. So I used to have a different one that would actually read all the headers from the original file um, and then look for the one that's email address and then write them all, but this was just a little simpler. So um, I looked up what the headers were that I was extracting and wrote them out here and have it save it as a um, to that file name. 
Um, I can't remember. I must have been getting occasionally have some errors. Um, I think basically the, the query wouldn't return quick enough, and so I would get an error. And so I had that in here. I probably don't need that. Let me go ahead and comment that out. Um, and then this is my little for loop over the, 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 there's line breaks in there. That's what it's using. So I'm splitting over that, which gives me each line. Each line was just an email address. This set task, task bar progress, that is what this is. Right, that's what um, was here to show me where I am. And so it, I have this, which I, I would say copy and paste if you want to borrow it. It, um, it is the, the it, it figures out the percent of where actually you're going to be, um, how much of it's going to be there. So that takes care of that. Um, and then if it's basically, if, if the row is blank, I don't want to submit it. It's just a check to have in there. And if it's the header row, so if the row, if the index is one, skip it because it's the header row. And then here I have a query string builder where this is building your parameters for your API call. Um, to, so basically you append that down here. You'll see in my function, I have the endpoint and then the query string, right? And so... Um, you need the whole, which watch our webinar um, on API calls, but most of them follow HTTP protocol, which is you start off with your first parameter. It would be a um, uh, question mark, um, and then it'd say like name, and then equals, and then Joe, right? Or question mark, email, equals, and then Joe, what the, I got so many email addresses, um, Joe at the-automator.com. Right. And then after that, it would be the um, ampersands. And those are the, the different parameters that you're passing to it. Um, here, I was just looking at it to make sure it was right. This is my actual function call down to this function. And so it passes the endpoint and the query string. Of course, I could have appended those together. There's no reason to have them separate. Um, but it, uh, and then it takes the results and stores it in this E object. Well, down here in the function call, because that's how this is how it would run, right? Is it jumps into here and says, okay, pass these two here. So the endpoint and query string, those get stuffed there, um, send it. When you get the response, load it in this JSON object. Um, so that's why somewhere up here, I have the include JSON uh, library that I, I forget which one I'm using, but um, it'll store, it converts basically a JSON string into an auto hotkey object. And so then I returned that auto hotkey object. And when it comes back, I store it in this E object or E O B J. And then I asked for specific, um, cause there were a lot of other things that I actually didn't want. And so this one was, I think this one beneath it, if we looked at it, let me, let me put it in the next line here. Um, so there's the, um, status. Let me see if I, Oh no, I, I guess I didn't. Um, I, I know at one point I had a bunch more, there were other things that I'm like, you know what, there's just too many things here. I don't want all of them. And so actually right here, I know I, I didn't clear my output. So let's go ahead and look at, at this one. This is everything for Huggy Bear. And I, well, it came back. Um, sorry, Huggy Bear, if you're out there. Uh, oh, actually, but you know what? This was just the uh, stuff that was returned. I'm pretty sure there's other information, uh, which I didn't, which I'm not showing in that um, thing, but anyway, you get the idea. It just cruises through your file, writes my new file um, to a text file, uh, and then I now have verified that. So, the other stuff I've worked on this week, let's see. Most of it was what you've probably already seen was um, I, I did some videos demonstrating how to parse out an email address, how to find um, use stir split using that, how to. Um, I actually just did another one with the uh, a couple different examples of if you have an array and you're trying to look for certain pieces of text. And then I remember there was a contains command and auto hotkey that you can look for text. Um, I also, let me see if I can pull it up here. Um, in LinkedIn, I was, I was playing with this idea of if I really cared about seeing, um, trying to get uh, people to, to share my stuff and actually, you know, not everybody's a, a quote unquote whale, right? Meaning that they, they have a lot of followers, right? I have over 15,000, which is pretty darn good. But, um, here, what I realized is, is if I look at the people following me, um, I can see like this guy has over 19,000 followers and here's 316, 503, right? And what I realized was, Hey, you know what? if I wanted to go through all of my followers and um, 
build basically like a, a, an, a list of people who are key influencers, right? That when they share things, um, this this guy's got 31,000 followers, right? And some people, especially if we look under, under here, now these, these aren't people I'm not connected with yet, but um, some of them have um, millions uh, of followers. Now, most people like that, you're not actually going to be able to connect with them. Uh, but there's a sweet spot, I think, of an under, I think it's 30,000, where you can connect to people. And um, here's 237,000. Oh, that, but that's a hashtag. Um, still gives you an idea. So anyway, I was working on some web scraping to grab these things and decide if I wanted to target people, like specifically automate a message back to my followers, automate a message to some of these people saying, hey, did you see this post about, you know, hopefully it's something that they're actually interested in. So that would be the other thing is you'd, I'd probably loop over them and find people who are interested in, let's say, web scraping, and then um, find people who have a lot of followers and then post something there um, that hopes that they might share it. But um, let's see, what else did I work on this week? Um, I did lots of, oh, I, I cleaned up my Excel function library, which has a lot of built-in Excel things um, for uh, for connecting and for searching and formatting and um, you name it. Uh, so, <coughs> excuse me. Um, but that's basically it. It was another light week just because of the, the New Year's and um, I've just been playing around and, and documenting some videos. Um, but that's it. Anyway, hope you guys are doing great. Have a great day. Bye.